So how did you start Logical Harmony? Actually, how did you start blogging? Um, I started blogging because I just kind of needed an outlet. I actually wanted to learn how to code HTML and like CSS and all of that. And so creating a blog was like a good excuse to do that because if you are wanting to learn how to code but you're not creating anything, you don't really have many challenges. Um, so I kind of had to start blogging. So I had like different types of code to learn and like a need and a function for the code. So that was how I started. And it was always like really random. Um, and then I started talking about beauty stuff eventually. It was just super random for a long time and pretty like useless. Um, but I started talking about beauty products eventually because that's what I enjoyed talking about. And then how long after you started blogging did Logical Harmony start? Pretty soon after, well, a couple of years after um, was when it first started, not in its form now. Um, it's been in its form now about cruelty free and vegan makeup for like seven-ish years. What was its previous form? It was just general beauty and fashion before. And then before that, it was just part of me wanting to learn a new platform and trying out WordPress and learning how to like code my own WordPress themes and things like that. So before I started talking about beauty, it was just like general nonsense, basically. It was like a personal blog. Okay, and what got you into cruelty free? <laughs> well, after I went cruelty free and after I went vegan, after meeting you. It just made sense to transition it. Um, I was transitioning to cruelty free. I had been interested in cruelty free for a really long time. And to be honest, I was like a lot of people out there where I thought animal testing by brands was primarily a thing of the past. I thought it was pretty rare. I thought it was horrific. It's something I had always like been against and been interested in learning about. But I really did believe the PR spin from a lot of brands that it wasn't happening. Mm. Um, and so once I decided to dig more into it after going vegan, I realized it was definitely still happening. And a lot of brands were still very much testing on animals and very much funding those processes. So it made complete sense that as I switched to cruelty free and vegan products, and I was trying to find dupes for everything and just trying to like navigate the space to do that as well on my blog. Um, there weren't too many people doing it at the time in the niche. So I was having a hard time finding someone that I identified with as a person and like with my style. And so that was a huge part of it too, was I figured if I had those questions and I had those struggles that other people did as well. And also just being able to like share what it was like too, because everything that I was finding out there that was, you know, people who were cruelty free, they had been cruelty free and vegan for a very long time. And so I felt like I couldn't find someone that I could identify with on my own journey. Hmm. Yeah. What was that journey? Um, just trying to figure out like what brands were actually cruelty free and you know, what ones, like what products I could use, what ingredients to look for. Um, it was really difficult back then. Like I remember I would read online like, oh, these products from like NYX, for example, are vegan. And I was like, sweet and I would go buy a bunch and then I'd come home because back then, I don't know if it's the same way on their packaging now, but the ingredient label was like on the underside. So you literally had to take off the plastic to actually read it. So I would get home and do that and then realize there was like carmine and beeswax and a bunch of stuff that I had saw online that was vegan. Um, and that was a bummer. And then I just remember at the time too, like, Revlon, what like PETA said Revlon was cruelty free and I reached out to Revlon because I was trying to understand like why do brands test on animals? Like, cause I was thinking if PETA approves Revlon as being cruelty free, like if Revlon can be cruelty free, anyone could be cruelty free. And Revlon told me like, oh, what you get in the US is cruelty free, but like we have a separate factory for stuff in China and that's all tested on animals. And that's when I started to really realize there was more to it and it was just like beyond the surface level. Hmm. I feel like I kind of went off on a tangent there, but yeah, it was interesting. It was an interesting time. And, and I think that I've always tried to really remember what that was like and to be really compassionate and understanding with people because it can be really tough. And so every time I see someone feeling frustrated about a brand, I think about when I read that Revlon was cruelty free and I bought a ton of Revlon and then reached out to them and realized like, oh, you're not actually cruelty free. And honestly, that right there is what really started me to want to make the brand list on Logical Harmony 
is because I felt like I couldn't trust a lot of sources out there. And also I just wanted to educate myself. Like that was it more than anything. I really wanted to understand what went into it and you know, what the ins and outs were for each brand and really felt like, I don't know. I just wanted to share that journey with people. So back then, what was your day to day like starting Logical Harmony? Oh, um, back then, actually, if we go back to like when that first happened, um, I was unemployed. I had randomly been fired from a job in like the worst way. I like told them I needed time off because I, we were moving. And when I called them to like see when I worked again, they just wouldn't return my calls. It was, it was like the worst way to fire someone. I was working for a small business and that was really tough because I went from like, you know, not like working in retail to then being totally unemployed. So I thought, okay, if I'm unemployed, this gives me time. Like I need to like, you know, look for a job obviously, but I'm doing all this research. I can really like start to turn this into something. Um, and so that was really difficult. And then eventually I did get a job, obviously. And I just continued to work hard and basically used all my free time for Logical Harmony. And pretty soon after, I'd say within like six months of that, I was working a full-time check job in San Francisco. My commute was almost three hours each way. I'd, I think it was like two hours on a good day if everything lined up correctly. So I would get up at 5 a.m. and I would get up, work out, work on Logical Harmony while I was like eating breakfast at my computer. Um, I would take the train to work. I had to leave the house by seven. I would be on Twitter and like doing post drafts on my phone on the way to the office. On my lunch breaks, I would go into a conference room and work. Um, I would get home at like seven, seven thirty at night, work out again, eat some quick food. And then I would be working until like 11 or 12 at night. And I did that for years where it was like, any spare time I had, I would be working on Logical Harmony. Um, and my coworkers knew it and they were super supportive. So like, you know, I did eat lunch with them a fair amount, but they were also totally understood that there were times where I was like, something just broke with the brand. Like I need to go lock myself in a conference room and figure this out. Um, and that was really, really great. But yeah, it was a lot of work and a lot of late nights, a lot of super early mornings, not a lot of sleep, but I think it was totally worth it. And I did that for years. Um, Eventually I got a different job and my commute was like half an hour less, but it was still really long days. And then after that, I started working from home and I just took advantage of that. I'd replaced all that commute time with time working on Logical Harmony. Okay. So that's what your day to day was like back then. Mm -hmm. And then a little over a year ago, about 14 months ago. Mm hmm you left your full-time job. Yeah, which was scary. i um, not gonna lie, that was like a huge leap and a big thing. And since then it's been working on Logical Harmony a lot. Um, I tried to do my absolute best to just like kind of flip my schedule and replace like when I would work my day job with working on Logical Harmony. It definitely took some adjusting. And at first I honestly needed like a couple weeks just to like rest and get my head. I, the reason I did it is that I was at the point where I literally felt like I mentally, physically, emotionally could not balance it at all anymore. Like I'd been at that point for a really long time where I just literally didn't know how I was going to keep going. Um, so it just became like, okay, this has to happen. We're in a situation where we can try it and see what happens. And thankfully so far it's worked out. Okay. Um, so now my day is just like working on Logical Harmony, spending time in email, creating content for the blog, you know, doing stuff for YouTube, Justin edits the videos, but coming up with like the ideas and idea of products to use, taking photos for Instagram, um, creating content, you know, I'm trying to do more for like Facebook and stuff now, spending time on Pinterest and We Heart It, updating the cruelty free brand list, reaching out to brands. Um, it's it's kind of all over the place, but it's a lot of stuff. Basically all the content created for Logical Harmony, Justin edits the videos and there's a lot of things I literally couldn't do without him. Um, and by him being there to do so much of that stuff, it frees up more of my time to spend time like replying to comments on Instagram and YouTube 
or reaching out to brands to get them on the brand list, which can sometimes be a huge undertaking and a huge process with brands. Um, and just researching different brands too, because we're in the US, I try to spend a lot of time researching and finding like different retailers in other countries and seeing who they're carrying and kind of looking into those brands and seeing like, oh, might this be interesting to my audience? Um, and then just, uh, you know, a lot of it is in email and things like that too, but so much content creation. I have so many things like drafted up that I want to put out for you guys. And I'm always taking notes about what people are searching for on the website, what they're requesting on YouTube, what they're requesting on Instagram and trying to figure out how to create that content for you guys. What about Kate? Yeah. So we do have an, ass <laughs> applesauce. <laughs> Uh, I'm just going to wait a second. It's not picking it's up. It's not? Okay. So we do have an assistant named Kate, and she helps me a lot with the initial outreach. She's my cousin. Yeah. She helps me a lot with the initial outreach to brands. Um, She's great. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so she helps me a lot with the initial outreach to brands, primarily the ones that you guys suggest to get on the list. Um, I kind of like look... <laughs> applesauce mm -hmm. this was the time you needed to do this she's like yeah definitely is um so when you guys submit brands i kind of look at ones that i'm getting a lot of requests for and look at the brand and look at like everything that they're doing and their products and then i send it over to kate and she shoots off that initial email and she does like the initial part of getting some of the brands onto our list um, it kind of just depends on what the brand is, who it is, what they make, and then passes it off to me towards the end. Um, but it's really helpful to have someone that can do like the, honestly, the pretty tedious stuff of just introducing us to brands being like, Hey, here's who we are. Here's what we do. We'd love to talk to you and get you on the cruelty free brand list. It's super helpful. Um, and it has made it so much easier for me to also have more time to spend creating valuable content and like spending my time a little more wisely because I used to email I just used to spend so much time like hours a day just sending out those like initial emails introduction emails to brands and a lot of them don't respond and so it just felt like such a time suck of time that I could be spending doing something else so it's super super helpful to have her I, I know it's like a super tedious task so it's really helpful to have someone that can help with that Mm -hmm. Cool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah, I really appreciate having her for that. It helps so much. Yeah. Where do you think Law & Harmony is going? Oh, where do I think it's going? Um, for the next year, 